Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here, going over the titration lab. And you don't have to write anything down, just answer the questions as they pop up on the screen. So what we're, we're going to talk about is titration. Titration is a process that can determine the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. So it can determine if something is an acid or if it is a base. And what's the other thing it could be? An acid, a base, or neutral. If the pH is exactly 7, then it is neutral. In this lesson, you'll perform a procedure to determine the acidity of unknown samples of liquids. You'll use the method of titration, a drop-by-drop -drop addition of acid or base to a solution that contains an indicator. In this case, sodium hydroxide will be added. As you shall see, this method, when conducted carefully, can be used to accurately determine the relative alkalinity of a solution. And again, alkalinity is describing a base. So this is what it looks like in real life. Um, this is just called a ring stand, so they just use it to attach the clamp to hold this thing up. This thing's called a burette, and it's glass, and they cost like $100 each. And there's little tiny lines on them that say 1 milliliter, 2 milliliters, like that. And then you can open and close the valve here to allow one drop at a time to spill into the bottom except usually the flask is underneath and you're catching it. So here you go, so the flask would be underneath, you'd open up the valve and let one drop at a time go through. A classic titration apparatus is shown here. In this lab experiment you will be performing a titration on unknown liquids. So titration, a lab procedure to deliver a measured volume of solution. In other words, we want to know exactly how many drops and therefore how many milliliters of the solution we're adding from the burette into the flask. The apparatus that is shown here is similar to what is used in chemical laboratory and in this virtual lab. You will be adding a base drop by drop to your unknown sample to determine the pH of the solution. It says water, but water is usually 7.0, so we're going to use it for a solution. The drop by drop tool is called a burette. The flask is called an Erlenmeyer flask. Take a look at how, with this classic titration apparatus, the color of a solution changes with the addition of an acid and base. So it started out clear, and now it's going to be pink. The pink color appears when an indicator, which was in the liquid before the titration began, reaches a certain pH, and then it changes color. So in here was the solution and some clear indicator called phenolphthalein, right there, phenolphthalein, and they were in there when we started. Then we added one drop at a time of the base, and we kept adding it until we neutralized the solution and then made it a base. When it's a base, it turns pink. This laboratory experiment highlights how the addition of a substance to an unknown can provide important information. Okay, I like this picture because it really shows how tall some of these burettes are. These burettes can be like three or four feet tall. So you have to be very careful in putting the solution in there. Then you open up the valve and allow it drop by drop to go into the flask. This lab experiment highlights how the addition of a substance to an unknown can provide important information. In this experiment, you will be adding drops of 0.75 molar NaOH, a strong base, to solutions of HCl of unknown concentrations. What's our clue that NaOH is a base? Well, it ends in OH, so that tells us it's a base. What's our clue that HCl is an acid? It starts with an H, and it's hydrochloric acid. So we're going to start with some HCl, but we're not sure how strong it is, and we're going to add drop by drop the base to it until we neutralize it and make it a base so we can determine the original pH of the HCl. The liquid added to the sample that is in the burette is called the titrant. So the fancy name for the green stuff is the titrant. It's whatever you put in the burette. So in this case, what are we putting in the burette? NaOH. Therefore, what vocabulary would, word would describe NaOH? We would call it the titrant. As you will observe, the indicator in the flask will change color at a certain pH, which can help determine the pH of the sample in the flask. The drop-by-drop -drop addition of the base helps carefully pinpoint when the color changes and therefore helps to accurately determine the acidity of the solution, meaning the solution in the flask. 
we measure the amount of liquid in a burette. We measure from the bottom of the meniscus. Meniscus is a fancy word for a curve. If you wear contact lenses, they probably have this shape. And right there would be the bottom of the meniscus. Think about when you put a corner of paper towel in water. Pretty soon the water crawls up. This is capillary action. The water crawls up the side of the burette just like it crawls up a Kleenex or a paper towel. So we must always measure from the same place. All right, note, burettes have the zero start at the top, which is the opposite of what you are used to in measuring cups. It is this way so you can easily see how much drips out the bottom. Okay, so what I mean by that, look at that. It goes one and then two is down here. That's because you're dripping it out the bottom and the water level goes down. Versus if you have a cup, like when you bake, it would say one here and two cups there, right? Because you're filling up. So when you bake, you fill up, so the numbers would say one, two, but since we're dripping down, the water level's going down, we have the zero, one, two on the top, and then it keeps going three, four, five as we go down below. All right, so let's look at some examples. The meniscus. This one is 3.3 milliliters. So we measure from the bottom of the curve, right where it's pointing, and we know it's more than three because it's between three and four. So then I count the lines, 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, All right, this meniscus is at what? Well, it's between three and four. We go to the bottom of the curve, and we go over here, it would be 3.9. All right, so for letter A, what would the titrant level be? Or in other words, the level of the liquid inside the burette? We know it's between 1 and 2. So 1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 milliliters. All right, let's try B. What is the level of the titrant or the liquid inside burette B? We know it's between 15 and 16, and it looks like it's right down to here, so I would say about 15 and a half. All right, now let's look at this one. So we know it's between what two numbers? We know it's between 24 and 25, and 25 is on this line, 24 is on that line, so 24.1, 0.2, so 24.2 milliliters. Background. In fields that range from forensic scientists to food preparation, the acidity of a substance is an important property for one to know. These data may help solve a crime or make a food more digestible. When determining the acidity of a substance, titration is a technique that is often used. Titration is the laboratory technique in which an unknown is combined with an indicator so something that's going to change color based on the pH. And, or you could say a substance that turns color at certain acidity levels. Phenolphthalein and cabbage juice extracts are examples of such indicators. In the lessons, I also talked about litmus paper. And in the indicator lab, we used universal solvent. Then, drop by drop, the titrant, in this case the base, NaOH, the stuff inside the burette, is added and the pH of the original mixture is raised until the indicator turns color. In the virtual lab, you will carry out this procedure several times. This lab is meant to replicate traditional titration using a burette. In many cases in real life applications, field test kits, electronic meters, or litmus paper are used to determine the acidity of a liquid. Pay careful attention to some of the details in the tutorial and the procedure as they are key to making sure your results are accurate. Okay, so what this lab is really doing, we are putting a base, NaOH, in the burette. The NaOH is called the titrant because it's what we're adding to the acid. We have an acid in the beaker. We are adding the base drop by drop until the beaker in the solution becomes neutral. All right, so here's my pH line. Anything less than 7 is what? An acid. Anything more than 7 is? But big numbers are bases. And anything at 7 is neutral. So step one, we're starting with the acid in the beaker. It starts somewhere with a pH between 0 and 6.999, right? Start somewhere over here. Then we're adding the base. 
we're adding something that's over here and the solution in the beaker is going to start to get higher and higher because we're adding more of the base. And eventually the solution in the beaker stayed pink for a little while which means it was neutralized so it's right on the tipping point. Step three, add just one more drop and it stays pink. Now the solution is a base and you went one drop too far. Alright, so number one, where do we measure Measure from, oops, I got to write that. We measure from blank of the blank when using a burette. So we measure from the bottom of the meniscus when using a burette. And specifically, that's the bottom of the curve. C20H14O4, phenolphthalein, is an indicator. So the C20H14O4 is simply the chemical formula for phenolphthalein. What does it tell you about the pH of a solution when it is clear? Okay, so look up here for help. When it's clear, that's when we start. So the pH of a solution is an acid. What about when the solution flashes pink? What does that tell us about the pH of the solution? It tells us that it's been neutralized. What does it tell you about the pH of a solution when the color in the flask stays pink? If it stays pink, now it's a base and we went a little bit too far. The base we used in this lab was NaOH. What is the clue that this chemical is a base? It ends in OH. Since we put NaOH in the burette, what is it also called? It's called a titrant. Define titration. So titration, we can look back up here it says, and titration is a procedure to deliver a measured amount of a solution to determine the pH. Alright, so we are ready to start the lab and in the lab we are going to find the number of drops and the amount of chemical in the burette when we started, the amount of chemical in the burette at the end, and how many milliliters we used. So, so in this lab activity, you will use a burette to conduct titrations and determine the concentration of hydronium ions in two water samples. Your burette is a lab tool that allows you to release a liquid drop by drop while measuring the exact volume you release. When the burette is in the stand, you will notice the zero mark at the top and the scale counting towards 7 milliliters at the bottom. The scale on the burette measures to within one-tenth of a milliliter, in other words like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. By looking at the meniscus level, you should be able to determine halfway points between the smallest divisions. In other words, you can figure out if it's 0.1 or 0.15 if it's right in between 0.1 and 0.2. All right, so we're going to attach the burette onto our ring stand and we're going to take the funnel and put it on top and this is how you do it in real life because you don't want to spill. We're going to add the titrant and do you remember what chemical is the titrant? It's our base, so which one is it? NaOH. Alright, so we put the titrant under there and we get our funnel out of the way and we have to release some of the titrant to get rid of it until our level of the water, sorry, our solution level of our sodium hydroxide is at the zero mark. So I'm going to click it and we can zoom in to see it better. So let's do that. Oops. There we go. And here we go. So, oh. Meniscus, remember, is the curve right there. And we'll need to release the titrant into the titrant bottle until the center or lowest point of the meniscus is even with the zero line. 
there you go. now we can see them both.